Hello, Bad Seeds, and welcome to the final Invina Veritas for this season. I've got mixed emotions about this. I am um, sad because we've come to the end of the eight-week cycle of Invina Veritas, uh, and it's been a lot of fun, but also, too, I'm kind of glad because it's been eight weeks of working one hour on a Friday, and I'm pretty exhausted. So, um, I mean, if you add it up, it's actually more than eight hours over eight weeks. So it's been... <laughs> It's been pretty hectic, uh, I'm not going to lie. A huge one for you today. I've got an amazing guest and a great friend of mine and a huge lover of wine. He's the quiz master and at the same time, the interrogator. But I first saw this man playing a character on stage called Malcolm in 1998 and remember thinking, this guy is either an SKP or he's an utter friggin' genius. So you can imagine how disappointed I was when I found out it was, in fact, the latter. Gold Logie rigging machine, Tom Gleason. Welcome to Invino Veritas. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> I just heard you say it, so I grabbed it off the shelf. I'll put it back. There we go. Uh, good, to, good to see you. How are you, mate? Yeah, I'm great. I'm really enjoying, I'm a bit like you, I'm really enjoying this whole being locked down. I don't think we can call it lockdown anymore. It's just partially closed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's submission now. It's like, you know, we're kind yeah. of like, okay, all right, well, if I don't have to go out, I'll submit yeah. to that. I'm okay. Yeah, you can't, you can't go to the footy, so no. I don't get to go to the footy as usual. I, I don't go to the footy that much, so it's fine. Now, who do you, who do you vote for in the AFL? Uh, I, I go for the Swans. That, that sums up my... That's my commitment. I go for Sydney Swans because yeah, I like to play along. And every September when they're in the finals, I learn the captain's name and then I get on with it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the apathetic swan supporter. <laughs> That's it. Uh, mate, yeah. it's great to see you. You've been very busy, but you've, um, you're have obviously on a little bit of a, a bit of downtime now. Yeah, yeah. Well, the weird thing for me was I was perfectly prepared, prepared for this whole thing because I was doing – I recorded all of this year's Hard Quiz episodes last year yeah. So the ones that are rolling out now, that they were all in the can and they were all done. Yeah. So I was prepared to take a lot of time off anyway. And now I'm annoyed because I was wanting to take time off with everyone else still really hard at work. Whereas <laughs> now I'm taking time off when a lot of other people in my industry are taking time off, which is not as satisfying. I like to think of you and everyone just beavering away. Whereas I, I, I don't know if you heard in the intro, but I've mentioned I've done um, eight weeks in a row of an hour, sometimes it goes an hour and 15. Um, so, wow. Anyway. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm doing this and I talked to Triple M the other day and that's about it. Yeah, that's my <laughs> week as well. I'll just shut up. <laughs> um, Tom, I've got a, a bunch of questions to get to uh, shortly. Yes. Uh, but first of all, let's let's have a little glass of wine. I know you're a big wine fan. We often uh, yep. have a glass of wine together. Tonight, we are drinking a Cabernet Sauvignon, 2012. Lovely. Block in Coonawarra. Um, this is a great little wine. I've had this before, of course. It is um, made by Luke Trotter, and it is um, a great... I, I, I love Cabernet. Some people get they got scared off it for a little while, but I think people are coming back to it. This is a latest release. It's 2012, so it's had a bit of time to settle, and it doesn't have that, you know, heavy tannin kind of tannic um, residue at the bottom and all that. It's not too grippy. It's just very, very easy to drink, but Got all the fruit of Cabernet that I love. Lots of black fruits in that. And um, interesting story, Tom, because this will lead to a question. A couple of years ago, I was in Coonawarra when I met Luke and his wife, Beck, lovely people. I was at the pub and I was having about, oh, I think it was about 150 drinks. And uh, Panola is a very welcoming place. And the locals, Luke, um, said to me, hey, do you want to come over to, to my place? We just live across the road in an old bank. Uh, why don't you come across and, uh, and have a drink? And I said, that's a great idea. And then about 10 minutes later, we were in the bank vault and inside the bank vault where he, he held all these special wines. And I remember thinking, hang on a second. Have, am I, have I just accidentally walked into what is going to become Snowtown of the Kunawara? <laughs> I was in a bank yeah. And I was going, hang on a second, why am I in a bank vault? Mm. It's like 12.30 at night and I'm in a bank vault. Have you ever found yourself like in a position where you've been at somebody's house or something like that and you've gone, hang on a second, this is not quite right or, or you know, go, oh, I think I need to exit right now? Oh, yeah. I probably shouldn't say this, but um, 
it. it was several years ago. I was on a tour in Renmark in South Australia, regional South Australia. And after the gig, we went out with some people to a pub, pub closed, we went back to their house. Anyway, so me and some other comedians were uh, sharing a bong with some of the locals in this house. <laughs> it was a long time ago. This is months um, ago, guys. <laughs> it's like, it's months ago. This was almost it COVID. It wasn't during lockout. It wasn't. <laughs> and I remember having a really good time and I was dancing at one point to some hip-hop music, which I'd never heard before in my life, having a great time. Okay. And I realised I didn't know where I was. Not in Renmark, like in Australia. I had no idea where I was. <laughs> so then I thought, well, how do I get out of here? So what I did was I thought, I'll just ring 131008, the cab number. I thought, who knows, it might work. The weirdest thing is it did. 131008 diverted to the only cab driver in Renmark. He turned up. He says, so where are you? I had to walk out the front and go, um, there's a tree and I'm looking at an antenna and the house opposite me, it's the colour green. And he found me and took no. me back to the back to the motel. No way. <laughs> That's incredible. That's better than I could have hoped for. Chin chin. Mm. This is oh, by the way, I love this. Cheers. No, it's lovely. Yeah, good with lamb. Amazing with lamb, this wine. And don't mm. be wrong, I could have wine makes an awesome wine, but this is great. Yeah. Well, I, weirdly enough, I've already had dinner because I've got young kids. We had Chinese food like about half an hour ago. <laughs> so, which, At 5 p.m., you just had some Chinese food. Oh, uh, it was at 4.45. And I've actually, it was pretty uh, it was pretty spicy. So I absolutely trashed my palate to get ready for this red. Uh, this will bring you back around. This will bring you back around. So, look, we had a little bit of a... Um, a bit of an insight into uh, your Logie. And I wanted, I, one of the first questions was actually from Martine. First question to ask you was, um, where is your gold Logie at the moment? And it is just there. It's just there on the shelf. Because I, uh, I, I kind of had this thing where I wasn't sure whether or not you'd be actually quite proud about it and put it out on the mantelpiece or if you would do <laughs> something ridiculous like, you know, put it as a hood ornament for your car. Yeah, well, <laughs> I... I, I liked keeping it on the mantelpiece in our kitchen, which is just through there, uh, so that people, whenever they can visit, they can hold it and play with it. But it was giving my wife the shit, so I put it in my office. But it doesn't matter. People just come into my office and grab it and get photos with it. But I was... You might enjoy this. It's sort of giving a bit of my live show away at the moment. The tour I was doing before it got uh, postponed due to COVID, yep. I actually... During the show, you know, a lot of people heckle at my stand-up shows. It just always happens. Eventually, someone at some stage would yell out, where's your Logie? And when that first used to happen to me, I'd just go, oh, it's at home on the shelf. And then I realised that was kind of boring. So I started taking it with me to gigs. And I'd keep it backstage and I'd wait for someone. Eventually, someone, where's your Logie? And I'd go, uh, it's just over here. And I'd pull it out and I'd give it to the audience and I'd hand it round, I'd hand it round the whole crowd. And I was still doing, I was doing this even when the coronavirus existed. And I'd say, spread the disease. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> anyway, probably a bit cavalier given the way things have gone, but that was early days. Mate, I've got to ask you about Logie because I, I, I have, um, I have actually uh, held one before at the Logies, but I haven't actually won one or been nominated. Whatever, let's just move on. Anyway, um, mm. Is it is it exactly the same size as Grant Denya? Because it like when I was always thinking, who should carry who home? No, that's not that's not. That's not fair. My question is: Are you still getting grief from people about you know um, manipulating the logies, not just for yourself but also to for Grant Denya, which some people have forgotten that you did? Yeah. Well, this is the weird thing. I've actually been given grief by nobody except for a few blank stares in that room. Mm. I, still to this day, when I walk down the street, people say congratulations. So yeah. it was enjoyed by the general public. There were just some people in the room who were a little bit upset. And I found out that most of those people who are upset lost. So that's that's usually a common thing that they've all got. But it, everyone, no one really cared. You know what happened? It was kind of quite weird looking back on it. I made a decision. I was a Gold Logie nominee, yeah. but out of, all the nominees by the highest rating show. So in theory, I was the most popular, but I knew from looking at Adam Hills's experience that the ABC just misses out over and over and over again. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to make sure I don't miss out. Yeah. So I'm going to push this beyond a shadow of a doubt. And, yeah. it, and it worked. Yeah. So really what you're saying is that you, 
just encourage people to do what they would have done if they weren't so complacent and ABC viewers and just go, oh, let's vote for Tom. Oh, actually, what are they doing on Q&A right now? And just- yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, ABC viewers, there are hundreds of thousands of them. I just said to them, I made a deal with them. I said, look, if you vote for me, I promise I'll win it in an entertaining way. And I followed through on that a bit more than I planned to. Yes. <laughs> were you, drinking, you were drinking wine when you... Yes. <laughs> you were drinking a red wine. Probably not as good as this one, I reckon, given the catering methods that you um, see in function rooms. I, don't, I love wine, as you know. Yes. But I don't yes. drink wine when I'm at major functions because sometimes it can just be a shadow of poison. Oh, yeah. It was, it was a pretty grungy Pinot Noir. Yeah. But what I said on the night was true. Costa had won Best Presenter and he had beaten me in that popular category. So for me, Matt's brain, I'm like, well, that means I haven't won because he won. But the ABC viewers, they're so lovely. They thought, well, while we're voting for Tom, we'll vote for Costa on the way through. (laughs) So when I, so I I had actually just started drinking. I'm going, well, that's that then. It's all over. So when my name got called out, I was genuinely shocked. But if you look back at the footage, I, I, I kissed my wife to, uh, you know, to say thank you, and I stood up and I shook, uh, I think, uh, David Anderson from the ABC's hand, and then I just went to walk and then I looked back at the table and I saw my glass of red and I thought, oh, this is going to be so much funnier if I'm holding the red. It'll make me look that much more... <laughs> yes, yes. Because <laughs> I thought that, you know, I, was, I knew I was about to throw down a few heinous truths so I thought yeah. I wanted to look a little bit more cavalier by holding the red. Geez, it was insane. I love the idea that, you know, um, ABC viewers, and it is by their nature very, very sweet human beings, is that they would see see you and go, I, I'm just, oh, just get a little bit for Costa. That, you know, they are yeah. people who, you know, when you go to Australia Post and you're lining up because you've got to send a parcel and then there's just some shit <laughs> in, in the aisles next to you as you go through. You just go, oh, as seen on TV... A little yeah. to make <laughs> cucumbers slice more readily, and yeah. then buy that. That's Costa, right? Yeah, Cost, Costa is an inkjet printer that you just get on the way through. <laughs> <laughs> He's great. He's great. Right, um, we've got uh, some questions. I want to start getting into them because also too, we'll have yes some total randos that you will uh, you will get to as well. Uh, but this is this is actually I suppose off the back of that, it's Holly. Um, do you knock one back? before filming hard chat and if so what do you have a drink before you do hard chat well when i do hard chat the the celebrity interviews they, they're often at weird times of day they're often like 10 o'clock in the morning so i never really do and also i need to be sharp because i learned that that lesson like a long time ago really early on with the segment mm-hmm. i did an uh, interview with it, um, but then ignored it when it was time to win a gold logie so yeah <laughs> Well, it was late at night. I had to pass the time. Yeah. Um, but with, I, I did an interview with um, Julie Bishop and she had to, she said, all right, I'll do it, but it has to be at seven o'clock in the morning so I've got to get a flight back to Perth. So I went, all right. Anyway, I was hung over as shit when I interviewed Julie Bishop and she was all over me and I was just, I just couldn't get out from underneath her. She was just so sharp. This is, she was like this and I'm like, all oh, right. So... Ever since then, I thought, no, 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 I, I usually drink nothing before I record a hard chat. And same with the quiz. You know what it's like in a TV studio? Yeah. You're doing the show, but you're thinking of all these other things at the same time, so you've got to, you've got to be really on top of it. Well, that's how I should be right now, but I'm not. <laughs> Next question. No. It's, you know, I think about with um, – and we've got some hard quiz uh, questions uh, – sorry, hard chat and hard quiz questions as well. But I was thinking about, like – and there's a, there's a question later on, Alison, but my question was – is it hard, you know, you had one person where you've just gone, actually, I, I would rather I wasn't in a I thought it maybe would have been with Husey, you know, just going, this is difficult because this person is a comedian. This person will know the mm. play or or this person is somebody that I don't actually want to viscerate in front of people. Has there been one that, that we don't know about that you've gone, actually, we're not going to do this one because you didn't want to do it? Um, I... For a long time, I didn't want to interview comedians because I thought it would be too... It's like we're complicit. I think Husey was the first comedian I did, actually. Yeah. Yeah. And when I decided to do Husey, the writers were just lining up at my office going, oh, how about this question? How about that question? They all Everyone was desperate to contribute. And because, weirdly enough, because I knew him, it gave me licence to go a bit harder. 
but I always decided that the segment was whatever the segment, it, however people handle it is up to them. Like, for example, I actually tried to get Sean McAuliffe to do it and Sean didn't want to do it because he said, it's kind of weird because you play high status and I play high status and we'd both be, we're both sort of pretending to be arrogant and we're sort of playing a similar game and it would yeah. just sort of be at loggerheads. And I understand yeah. what he was saying, but for me, I think it would be hilarious watching us both clamouring to try to get to the top. That would be the fun of watching it. So I see it as a little bit like a chess game. Sometimes you're just trying to watch how people cope with it. That's part of the fun. Yeah, you'd make an excellent interrogator. Like, you know, if you were just flyers <laughs> and a small space, a small working space in Guantanamo Bay, for example, you could do some really great stuff there, um, mm. like torturing people. Um, <laughs> let's let's get to a, a total rando. Total- Hello, Paul. How's it going, guys? Oh, you know, Paul. Where, hey, first of all, mate, where are you uh, buzzing in? Look at you and your cheese plate and your leather couches. You, <laughs> you are sitting oh, in right oh, Paul, where are you calling in from and what are you drinking? Uh, freezing cold Tassie. Uh, okay. We've got a maximum of 12 degrees today down in Hobart. And um, I am a uh, block male person, but I don't have any in a cell at the moment. So I've dug in and got a friend's uh, the Clipper, Kunawara, okay. at yep. 2012. Yeah, brand's very, very good. Another great Coonawarra one. And so, and you, in Tassie, I mean, obviously you get lots of Pinot and amazing Chardonnay, Riesling, everything down there, but you like your Coonawarra reds, but you love block. Well, because it's so cold, you have lots of, uh, you know, it that goes very well with a nice, gutsy, meaty red. Yeah. <laughs> what a great place to, you know, get hypothermia. I love Tassie. <laughs> Mate, you've got, you've got a question for, for Tom or for myself or for both of us, Paul? What is it? Well, I, I am a teacher and... Uh, Sorry to hear that, mate. Um, there's a cry for help. Is this a cry for help? <laughs> it's, a cry for help. it's been a difficult time in lockdown, that's for sure. Um, but I, I tend to... Uh, I tend to want to be rather mean to my students. In much the same way that Tom <laughs> on a uh, hard quiz, I, I tend to take that sort of approach to many of my students. I'm just wondering whether you'd recommend that as a, a good thing or not. Oh, I think that you are teaching your students resilience. I think it's really good. In fact, some of my favourite teachers were always a little bit mean, which I quite liked. You know, that that make you try harder. But I also think te- I think teenagers respect it. That's one of been that's been one of the big shocks for me about hard quiz is it's very popular with teenagers, and I think they enjoy watching someone who looks like their dad misbehave. Really, is that what you think? Is but also, do yeah. you think they like the authority part of it? Yeah, I think so. I mean, also, I'm just doing all the things you're not supposed to do on a, a game show, so I think they enjoy watching me just tear all those conventions to shreds. Yeah, I, I've, I've got a feeling, and Paul, you might you can chime in with this as well. I, I coach junior football, and uh, my nickname in the club is probably not, uh, it's warranted but not welcomed. It's called 80s Coach. They call me 80s Coach. <laughs> I'm so 80s coach. I really am. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'll do some laps. And, and look, you know, I, I, I'm great with the kids. I, I love working with the kids. But I am actually, strangely, as a comedian, like all of the kids, if they don't know already, when they find out I'm a comedian, they ask their parents, they go, are you sure? Because he comes across more as a prison warden. Um, but <laughs> I, I, there's a group of kids, and I uh, worked with some last week, who actually respond, and I get this from the, from the uh, parents and from the kids, who really, really like the discipline and the structure because I think, you know, perhaps in schools and everything else, it's become very, um, uh, a bit more familiar and a little less kind of authority. So it's, it's almost like they kind of like it. Paul, back me up on this, please. Otherwise, I look like an asshole. <laughs> look, um, in many ways, I think being a teacher is almost like being a, a comic. Um, you have your hecklers in the crowd. We have students. No, and sorry. Whoa, 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 whoa. Just, <laughs> mate, you went fucking way too far when you said that. We are. Yeah. No, no, no. Actually, you know what? It's it's nothing like being a comedian. Uh, we're paid way more than you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> and, and like when we at night, we have this sense of achievement, and <laughs> it's, it's actually it's actually, and we're adored by the public. There is a lot of. Things. Uh, my mum's a teacher. Paul, go on, mate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, you, 
you do get a sense of reward and satisfaction. There will be times when you'll get a class where it does just click. Um, and I do like to bag kids out, but you do these days, you do have to be pretty careful who you pick on who you bag out. Um, yeah. Soon pretty much work out as the same with it, with an audience, who's up for it and who's not. Yeah. Um, and you just have to be aware that sometimes you cross the line and you, you make sure that if someone's taken it the wrong way and you apologise and you move on. But you go help the letter with the ones who are up for it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And well, if you want to, um, in homage yeah. to Tom here, uh, yeah. oh. uh, we had a Friday afternoon quiz for kids to do online. I'll, I'll teach them a lesson and they do a quiz. And because I'm a teacher and I'm involved compared to you guys, I can't afford a big brass mug. So I had the small brass cup. Yeah. Um, <laughs> because whiskey's for what I should know. So they, they get the yeah. whiskey and they get the small brass cup for the person that got, got the highest score. So. Oh, that's great. I'll let you in on a little secret about sparring with the contestants. And I think you'll find this is very similar with your students. Quite often what I do is if I'm paying out a contestant, I'll say something, but I'll often give them a gift. And sometimes they pick it up and throw it at me and other times they don't. It'll be, I'll just leave the door open on something. You know, I'll just mention something. It might be something about, you know, hair or hairdo. I mean, I'm wide open to be made fun of for being bald. And you'll see some people, their eyes will light up. They're like, oh, beauty, I'm in front of the goal. I can boot it in. And others will just like, it was a, they'll miss it. But often I find, yeah, one of the tricks of hard quiz is I'll leave it open or sometimes I'll leave a gap and people just want to fill it and they'll say something. And whenever the contestant lands the line on me, that that's gold. So if and you're probably the same. If a student manages to rip into you and you can laugh along, you're the winner. Yeah, I mean, I, I love the intro to hard quiz where you, you do give them that entree for those who are prepared to step up to the plate and have a go. Mm. Uh, so when someone does that to you, does it make you want to go harder back at them for the rest of the episode, or you say, you know, chap over you and uh, I'll, I'll lay off you a bit. Well, I've had a rule for a long time because a lot of the beginning of Hard Quiz is based off things I've been doing to stand-up audiences for years, a bit of back and forth with the crowd. And I've always had this rule. When you're having back and forth and you're improvising, if the audience claps, it's finished. You're never going to get better than that. So if someone lands a line on me and there's an applause, it's not going to get better than that, move on. Same with radio, isn't it, Tom? Get, get, yeah. job, get out. And that's why we're yeah. cutting off now, Paul. You are done. Yeah, yeah. yeah you better get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, that is actually the out. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Cheers, mate, to everybody in Tassie who's watching. Yes. Thanks for being a part of it. Yes. Tom, you actually, you're actually, a, uh, am I making this up? Are you qualified or, or able or considering becoming a teacher? I remember. We had yeah, a... well, I was, I was doing a science remajoring in maths and I was thinking that I might end up becoming a teacher and I was a maths tutor at the time. So when I started comedy... I got a job at the ABC writing for TV yeah. and I still had a few students. Um, I, I, I had to ditch all my year 11 students. I had all these students I was tutoring and I kept about three or four and I took them through the HSC while I was still doing that. But yeah, so I was a maths tutor when I switched over to comedy. I've, I've never offered benefit to anyone. So that's, that's really quite, that's awesome. <laughs> quite I want to backtrack before we go to another question. Tom, because it was in the intro, because I, I genuinely, I, I've always admired it. Um, 1998, I think it was, Russell and I went on our first interstate tour and uh, we went to Sydney from Melbourne. We went to Sydney, went to the Harold Park Hotel where we were staying and we were doing some, uh, some we we're doing our show, but also too, we were doing some stand up there as well. And you were performing at the Harold Park Hotel and you were doing a character called Malcolm. And yeah. I, I said in the intro, I could not figure out if <laughs> legitimately a patient who had, <laughs> I, I, I remember thinking at the time, this is irresponsible that somebody put <laughs> on stage. This is irresponsible. And then I went, yeah. oh no, fuck, it's genius is what it is. And <laughs> borderline, it's a character that you did many, many years ago that you stopped. Yeah. Or, um, I don't know why you stopped it, but um, is that, that was, is that how you got into stand up? Did you start performing as a character first? Yeah, so I was, what happened was I had, I wanted to do comedy at university. There was a competition at Sydney Uni. And I, I was thinking, oh, I'll just make fun of mature age students because I was trying to think of something that the students would, you know, connect with easily. I thought, oh, I, I know, it's funny. 
I'll just pay out mature age students, the older students. And then I thought, oh, you know, it's even funnier than paying them out is pretending to be one. So that's what I decided that I would be one. And in that respect, I was a big fan of Norman Gunston yeah. and Dame Edna and, and where you became the joke. Or, or John Cleese's Basil Fawlty, you know, like rather than saying, how annoying are these bigots? He would like, I'll be a bigot and I will, I'll become the person that you should laugh at, not with. And yeah. so... The costume I remembered, I decided that it was a flannel shirt and tracksuit pants that were brand new. And I thought that would really throw people off because it had looked like I'd gone to my, I was wearing my best clothes, my best flannelette shirt, my best brand new tracksuit pants, my best brand new KT 26s Velcro. And they, and I'd wear it really tidy, tucked in. Cause yeah. it would, cause you'd think, oh, this guy thinks he looks good, but I look terrible. So look that was all. You look, you seriously, you look like somebody who had <laughs> a rehabilitation centre or something yes. like that. I was, yeah. I remember sitting in the audience just going, I can't figure this guy out because of the tracksuit, the grey tracksuit pants with a flannelette shirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember thinking, like, I think I was at, I think I was at the time I was, I was watching, um, there was a videotape, it was called The Best Bits of Norman Gunston, and me and my mate uh, at, who I lived with, we'd been watching it on a loop and... I love the way that people couldn't tell if he was for real or not. So I like that whole thing. So, I mean, I suppose these days it's like uh, Borat, you know, he, he ended up doing, you know, that kind of thing where people just like, I just don't really know if this guy's the real deal or not. I like people being confused. Yeah, I love that too. It's, and it's, I, what I like about it is it, it's, it's, you can take the piss out of somebody, but it's actually pretty harmless. It's not directed. I've never liked comedy that, I don't like hurting mm. comedy, you know, I like comedy. Mm taking the piss out of yourself or taking the piss out of mm. people you like as opposed to kind of, you know, um, you know, doubling down on somebody too hard the way that you um, do. Um, <laughs> but see, that's another thing with the quiz. Sometimes people think, oh, surely you can't do that to the poor contestants. But what people started to realise after the quiz ran on was it's actually four versus one. Because yeah. when all the, when, And especially in this season, when the contestants gang up on me, up. Oh, it's a treat. Um, if you've just tuned into Inventor Veritas, uh, Gleeson and I are drinking uh, 12, the 2012 Cabernet from Block in the Coonawarra, and it yes. is just getting better as it gets a bit of air. It's uh, nice. Yes, yeah, really good. Good one. That was it's good. really rinsed away the Mongolian beef that I had. <laughs> Mongolian beef. <laughs> like, really? Do you reckon there's anybody in Mongolia just going, oh, Aussies can't get enough of this stuff? <laughs> do, you hear, do you hear that this this meal's really big in Australia? No, it's not. We made it. <laughs> somewhere, somewhere along the way, somebody's just gone. It's beef, but it's Mongolian beef. You go, is it? Is it really? Because yeah. you see pictures of Mongolia. Here's my thing, right? Here's my question. When you typically think of Mongolia, which I've never been to, admittedly, but when I see images of Mongolia, I don't see a lot of herds of beef. <laughs> you know what I mean? I see horseback warriors. And um, falconry, which is awesome, um, yeah. you know, an amazing culture, and Genghis Khan, all these images coming. I don't see cowboys rustling up <laughs> beef cattle because it's not there. So I don't know. Might be there. Yeah, you know, my my wife is really into food, as you know. Yes, but she hates Chinese food. She doesn't hate Chinese food. She doesn't. She thinks of it as. So she, she likes like the finer things in life when it comes to food, right? So she's a real foodie, but yep. she thinks, she, you know, the, she thinks Chinese takeaways the pits. Uh -huh. So I've taken it as my mission that I've taught my children to be connoisseurs of regional Chinese restaurants. That's exactly so, what And I love it. That's exactly what we do. Aussie, we call yeah. it Aussie Chinese. Yes. Is, yeah. And then you have Chinese, we call it Chinese. Yep. This is not a, a disparaging, you know, a brief mm, No, I love it. It's just Chinese because it rhymes with wines. So we have yeah. chimes and wines, and we have regional chimes. And yep. Oaken Hill, we had amazing regional chimes once. There's a place yep. in Oaken Hill. And a place in Port Lincoln I once had an incredible meal at. And it's just, I love it because they're actually, if you look at those um, regional Chinese restaurants, they are a snapshot of Australian history. In like the 80s, the architecture is this kind of pastiche of um, 80s brickwork and stuff like that, but then I'll have these kind of nuanced elements of China, and you just go, it's just a collision, and it's always oh. Jade, Jade uh, Dragon Village or something like that. Just go, what is that? 
<laughs> they, you know, it's, it, they were the original Golden Arches. It was an unofficial franchise. You could go to any country town in Australia, you walk into a Chinese restaurant, it's the same. We love it. We always do. When we do a lot of road trips, it's always like, let's get to this town, find yeah. the towns and, and try it. Because I, I, I agree with you. Like, it's, is it, you know, five-star restaurant eating? Probably not. But is it good, just Aussie tucker? It's great. I'm with you on that. Right to hear oh, that. I love it. Yeah. It's a it's a treat. Delicious. I'm super hungry for fried rice. Oh, oh. Just, I've got some just there, mate. I'm, I might even wrap this up early. I'll leave the meeting just to go and... Mate. Rip into it again. <laughs> Nothing more Aussie than lemon chicken. I don't think lemon mm. chicken exists in China. I've never. You just. It's just. It's just for Australia. Again. Well, right. I got. I got the Mongolian beef, honey prawns, and honey chicken, <laughs> fried rice. Do you want a big bag of prawn chips? Uh, yeah, sure. Why not? Yeah. What, what, I live in a free country. Of course, I want prawn crackers. Hundred <laughs> percent. I want that. Love it. All right. Uh, let's get to a question. Um, this one came in. Oh, I don't know who this one was from. I should know. Apologies. Uh, but I've missed their name. If you were arrested, what would your friends and family assume that you had done? I think this is a great question. If you were arrested and you were ringing your wife or that, or your family and friends had heard that you'd been arrested, Tom Gleason, what do you think they, they would assume that you'd been arrested for? Uh, public urination, definitely. Because I love pissing outdoors. It really annoys my wife. It's a bit of a farm thing. I grew up on a farm when yeah. I was a kid. You yeah. never pissed in the toilet because it was a waste of water. Because we had our, our toilet actually had rainwater in it. Like so, you would go out onto the lawn. You'd piss on the lawn. Yep. I live in the country now. If yep. I I always try to piss on the lawn if I can because I enjoy it and because I own it. There's nothing better than pissing on lawn that you own. I mean, look, dogs have discovered that. I mean, dogs. Yeah. <laughs> so also as a consequence if i am walking home late at night i don't mind urinating in public <laughs> i quite i mean when i say in public i'm in a public space i mean i hope that i don't it doesn't get witnessed but my wife should straight away think he was pissing in a bush i know it that's what it would have been yeah, you, yeah hang on let's just qualify this right you're not the poo jogger right you no. don't go to run and just go no. oh hang on no. this is the time that i should do a poo no that's at your house that's at your no. house Water restrictions. I mean, seriously. And who does a poo when they're going for a run and doesn't have like tall? No. You're wrong. You're a break. No, person. I'm not a poo jogger. I'm a piss walker. That's all yeah. I do. All I right. piss ambler. I amble along and I wee late at night and it doesn't hurt anybody. So it'd be, you'd be, if you've been charged with something and the call comes through to your family, your family are going to say it's more than likely public urination. Yeah, he was either pissing in a bush or jumping in a bush. That's another thing I do. I haven't done it for a while. It's a bit dangerous. Sometimes if I see a hedge and I've had a few and I'm on holidays know, and the hedge a... looks and the hedge looks just really beautifully manicured, there's nothing better than just jumping in the middle of it. Yeah. It's like that it's like that episode uh, where I think it's Ned uh, Simpson Homer Simpson comes out of the hedge to Ned Flanders. That... <laughs> yeah. He makes it fall back in. I know what you mean. I know exactly yeah. that. My wife, George, is actually just off screen. She's a big fan of yours, Tom. Uh, let's yeah. see. We've discussed this before. Um, I'll ask it. If if you got a call to say that I'd been arrested, a probably not that big a surprise, really. Um, <laughs> it would be that surprise. Would you, what would you think it was, George? You, you need to kind of talk. I don't know. It could be many variables. But what would what was the first thing? Um, we've got Merrick here at the police station. What? It's a sex offence. It's always a se it's a sex offence. <laughs> I gave, I gave, I opened the door for her like you do on on, on hard chat. That's it. Yeah, yeah. That's on hard quit. Sorry, I gave, gave mm. you the, um, I gave her the option there. No, okay. <laughs> I know what it would be. It would be doing something like playing um, street footy drunk because I actually got mm. run over by a car when I was playing street footy after the 2010 grand final. Oh god. Yeah, which my team won. Uh, mm. I was in Collingwood and uh, I was drinking with a bunch of mates and we're having a game of street footy and a car camera in the corner and it ran me over. And I didn't remember it until the next day when I woke up <laughs> completely, completely bruised and black around my hip. I said to my brother, I said, man, I feel like I've been hit by a car. And he goes, you were hit by a car. And I went, what? <laughs> and he goes, we were playing street footy, a car camera in the corner and it ran you over. And I went, oh, mm. I, don't, I don't feel, I said, what happened? They said, they were just worried about you. And then they, when they realized you were okay and you were just a 
a drunk Colin supporter, they just left you and just drove off. And I went, oh, <laughs> you swap details and you go, no, there's no need. The car was fine and you looked all right. So that was <laughs> But just, anyway, yeah. I think that's <laughs> would not be Well, I know I'm an idiot. Uh, okay. <laughs> Tom, we've got a poll. Now, you, you've you set a poll up. We've got a poll yeah. that um, people can vote on this live. Um, we've got it happening now. But uh, I've got a question from Lauren, which will lead into this. And she asks, can you recommend a nice Sauvignon Blanc, Tom? And your question is, in fact... Mm, Chardonnay or Sauvignon Blanc, which do you prefer? Well, yeah. I, I worded it differently. Yeah, how did you word it exactly, Tom? Chardonnay shits on Sav Blanc, discuss. <laughs> <laughs> or yes or no. <laughs> That's exactly how you phrase it. So you're, I'm not a massive Sauvignon Blanc fan, I've got to be honest. And when it tastes, mm. sometimes I find it can get really perfumed and smell like um, uh, passion fruit flowers and it can get like an, I call it the ambipure of wines when it goes too far. But I do like Chardonnay, yeah. discuss. Well, I, for me, I drank a lot of Sav Blanc. I think Sav Blanc is an e- was an easy drink to drink for a long time. and But after a while, it just starts to taste a bit like cordial. And a friend of mine, I said to a friend of mine years ago, I said, I don't really like white wine. And she goes, what? You don't like white wine? She says, do you like beer? I'm like, yeah. And she said, what red do you like? I'm like, Shiraz. And she's like, you'll love Chardonnay. It's mm-hmm. got a bigger, it's got a much bigger flavour. So I like... The darker, the better, Shard. Now, I really like a, a you know, like I like the ones that are all, all like really, one of, you know, I like the ones that look like almost like really yellow. I know yeah, that, that yeah, sounds, yeah. I know some people that that's just like the worst thing ever, but I like it. I like the full flavour. Yeah, there's a, there's a wine that I had recently, which I, I absolutely love, and I'm going to have a bottle of it again over the weekend called Malaluca. And Malaluca mm. is made um, just in the, uh, it's in Murrumbaton, so it's um, north of Canberra. Yep. Malaluca actually allow the Chardonnay to oxidise a little bit, so they expose it a little bit to air when it's when it's go- it still goes through malolactic process, which is probably what you like. You know, it's kind of buttery elements and it's got a little bit of oak in it, but it's also allowed to get a little bit of oxygen to it, which oxidises it, makes it really quite dark and yellow. And some people think it's like they might taste it and think it's faulty. It's not. It's made that way, but and sometimes it can go too far and ends up tasting like a sherry. But it's just beautiful. So maybe give that a crack. But I'm with it, Tom. I love I love Chardonnay. I think it's a just yeah. and when it's like that, I really I like them both when they're a little bit um, steely and a little bit kind of austere. But I also love them when they're massive and fruitful. But with Sauvignon Blanc, here's a little trick too, Tom. You can probably this if you like. If you want to. Oh, by the way, I have to defend myself just slightly because I also reckon I have fallen victim to what happened to Chardonnay in the '80s. Yeah. So Chardonnay was popular, it got overproduced, so there was a lot of shit Chardonnay in the mix. And I think a similar thing's happened with Sav Blanc. New Zealand Sav Blancs are so popular and there's a lot of crap Sav Blanc being thrown out there. So I think yeah. it sort of starts to sully the name. Yeah, and when, I think with um, with Chardonnay, it's got a lot of wood and that gives it a really kind of vanilla flavour and it can be quite overwhelming when it gets too mm. much like that. So people kind of shirk away from that. And with New Zealand, with Sauvignon Blanc, it's, it's typically, and this is a thing you can do, Sauvignon Blanc is typically made in steel vats. So, you, you know, it just gets the steel, uh, not the steel, sorry, fem, uh, fermentation process takes part in a, you know, uh, placing a, a vat uh, in a steel vat, and then it goes from that into the bottle. So it doesn't have any time. It doesn't get any wood. There's no way. But you can get this thing called Fumé Blanc, right, which is when it gets a little bit of wood. So it will get it put in a barrel for a period of time. Otherwise, it doesn't go in it. So it, all right, mm. okay. Okay, we've gone right off track. But if you want to try something that's a little bit more textured and a little bit rounded and a little bit more fuller than a regular Sauvignon Blanc, you can go for a few more Blanc. Um, all right, so the question was, Chardonnay is awesome. A Sauvignon Blanc is awful. Which do you prefer? It is coming at Sauvignon Blanc, 48%. Chardonnay, uh, 1%. I don't like either, 11%. Yeah, well, that's, that is a da- that's a damning indictment on uh, the people watching this. But I think that, but I also think that that, Sav Blanc's very popular. Well, obviously, I mean, and we've obviously got a lot of pissed aunties who um, are watching. <laughs> like, um, Sauvignon Blanc can be the the one choice for the pissed auntie, but there you go. Yeah, but also it's the it's the it's the choice drink for when you go to gallery opening and they hand you a glass of something in a plastic cup. Sav Blanc, there you go, on your way. Plastic cups not making this. 
looks more and smells more like an amber pure. But a bit of a shout out for Chardonnay near here too. It's a very popular, everyone knows about it. I'm in Romsey in country Victoria. It's Macedon Ranges, uh, very close to Hanging Rock. Like 10 kilometres just that way is uh, Curly Flat. They make a, I mean, it's, it, everyone knows that. It's, their Chardonnay is extraordinary. Yeah. In fact, actually, I got given one for my birthday. It was like the Magnum size, or maybe it was a three litre, one of those really massive bottles. Imperial. And so, yeah. And so my wife went up to get one uh, from the winemaker up there and said, oh, it's for Tom's birthday. I'd like to get it. And he was like, oh, we don't, we don't have any of the curly flat Chardonnay in that bottle, but it's all right. I'll, I'll sort something out. So she comes back the next day. And he goes, there you go. And it's the giant curly flat Chardonnay bottle with the, you know, the wax at the top and all sealed in. And he goes, I had a red wine in that anyway. So me and my mate, we had to get rid of it last night so that we could put the Chardonnay in it. <laughs> so I just emptied the bottle and used it as an excuse to get on with their daily ritual. <laughs> uh, all right, uh, if anybody's wondering what we're drinking, we're drinking uh, mm. Kunawara. Cabernet Sauvignon from uh, Block, um, and it's going down the tree. We've got another. Yes. Uh, it's got another. Um, that's good. I like a little bit. I like a wine question. I love, as you know, I like wine. I like talking. I know. I love it when comedians like wine as well. Mm. As you know, a lot of comedians nowadays think it's very popular to um, not drink wine or drink anything at all. And I go, oh, please don't do that. Mm. Yeah, that's very unusual. You won't mention their names, Dill Rook. Um, <laughs> let's get to. Uh, to rando Debbie is dialed in. Hi, Deb. How are you? We're yeah, really good. Where about you? Yeah, great. What are you, what are you drinking? Um, oh, I'm drinking um, a glass of Nashville Lane. Yes, Pinot Noir. Yes. That my friend Merrick sent me. Oh, oh nice. Straight up. We've never yeah. seen it ever. Oh, Deb. Yeah, Deb sketches. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> uh, so, just a bit of background, Tom. Every yes. week we have like a live sketch uh, of, of the conversation that we're having. Yeah, here we go. Oh, great. Yeah. So, she's Deb is actually sketching this out whilst we're oh, talking. Yeah. Oh, yeah. lovely. That's great. Show yeah. that again, Deb. So, where about are we? In, 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 and it's it's a timeline uh, this of this in a very tough. Yeah, I'll show you this. This version, I've got you know a very professional setup here. So here's Tom. Yeah. Here's his yeah. Logie. Hey Tom, I need you to hold up the Logie because you showed it really quickly and I wasn't looking and I didn't get to see what oh. it looked like. You don't know what it looks like. The the, the shape is iconic. I know, <laughs> and, I, and I panicked and I think I got it wrong. I like how it just there, there it is. Red disease is the message. Oh, <laughs> I'll just fix the head later. Yeah. Did you get that, Deb? Did you see the Logie? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's right. So here's, there's a funny little detail on this. I don't know when they started doing this, but it says most popular entertainer, blah, blah, blah. And it says um, 2018 slash 2019. So I don't know, maybe I was the most popular across that financial year. It's quite, it's, <laughs> I don't quite know why they put that there, but anyway. Yeah, right. It's the gold Logie EOF EOFS. EOFS. EOFS champion. <laughs> well, Deb, lovely to speak to you because um, I did send you some wines a little while ago to say thank you so much for the fact that, you know, each week you tune in, you participate and you sketch out and then we send it to everyone. Everyone loves it. My wife, Georgie, is mine. She um, was gone last week. She ended up on there as well. I think was it that's last week or the week before when she week. asked the question? Yeah, okay. and I think that's why she might be a little bit happy with herself because... <laughs> <laughs> um, so Deb, what, you're from you're in Melbourne. I'm Melbourne, yeah. Yep. And uh, do you actually have a question? I do. I was going to ask Tom. Um, I had a Logie question, but I've changed my mind. No, that's right. Um, you can ask both. No, you stick at that. Um, what's the weirdest subject expert that you've had on um, hard quiz? On hard quiz. Yeah. Um, so you get all the randos, man. Oh. Like, uh, all bananas. Well, I still remember them from how I first hear them. So often when I first hear them, it's often I've, I've walked into the office and yeah. I'm talking to the people who have done the casting and they've, they've, they've gone through all the auditions. And yeah. I'm like, how'd it go in Brisbane? And they'll be like, oh, 
the best. Someone's yeah. into cremation. Uh, someone else is into toenails. There's this other person who likes knots and knot tying. And, and <laughs> yeah, I always like the ones that are really simple. They sound like not much, but when you scratch under the surface, you get a lot more out of it. Yeah. So one of my favourite subjects is just knots. If you said, oh, I'm really into knots, you think, well, what does that mean? And he, this guy who's part of a knot tying guild that was, yeah, he loves it. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Look at this. This is amazing. Mm. It's, yeah. You know, it's, it feels like uh, we're in inception because as we're speaking, <laughs> we're turning into the creation that I'll see later on. It's doing my yeah. fucking head in, Deb, is what I'm saying. Which is only making the entire experience even more surreal. Mm. Isn't that great? That's I'm, also just, I'm also just a bit in awe of your lovely handwriting because... It's one of, I have the worst handwriting and it's it's one of those things like, do you remember the olden days, Merrick, when people would ask you for an autograph? It doesn't happen yeah. anymore. They want a selfie. Yeah. Yeah. I'm happy with selfies. Every time yeah. I used to sign an autograph for people, people would look at it like, oh. Yeah. yeah. It, it's just because my writing's so terrible. I'm like, sorry. Yeah, I have terrible handwriting too. It is the mm. mark of a genius. So, mm. uh, Oh. <laughs> Feel the burn, Debbie. <laughs> That's great. Did, did you have a follow-up question? Did you have another question that you wanted to ask? Nah, no, that was it. That was it. Yeah. Well, lovely to meet you, Deb. Yeah, Thanks for being a part. You've been awesome. Yeah. I'll, I'll send you some wine. Yes. What, what, what have you liked? What have you Chardonnay. Liked? All the Chardonnay. Correct. A bit correct. <laughs> I know. I was so surprised by that response. And I was too said tom everything you just said about what you love in chardonnay i'm like yes that's me that's me yeah yeah chardonnay's a, you know it's got a it's a punch in the guts it's got it's got to have a bit of weight to it yeah, yeah. that blanc is just for me it's a bit too a bit too light anyway i feel i should i should i just remembered the majority of people said they like so blanc i should try to appeal yeah. to the audience <laughs> <laughs> you know your people make they make life mistakes all the time and yes. uh, <laughs> they're making these Dreadful, dreadful mistakes. Deb, lovely to speak to you. Thank you very yes. much. Thanks for having me on. Good on you. Yeah, uh, thanks, Deb. Tom, I'm actually going to leap forward to a, um, a question and then I'll come back because I've got one here which I think is fitting off the back of that, which is, uh, this is from a guy called Tom. And he says, um, can I have a photo of your feet? <laughs> which of, is, my, of my feet? Yeah. Tom, there's a guy called Tom who mm -hmm. like a photo of your feet. Now, I don't know. I, there's there's somebody, I don't know if it was Tom or if it was somebody else, but there's a dude on Instagram uh, who has asked me once or twice before uh, if he could have a photo of my feet because he, he goes, look, I'm a foot fetish. That's my thing. Oh. Really, I'm really <laughs> into feet. I'm going to, you know, full disclosure, I love your feet. I've seen them in a couple of images of you doing stuff and I really like your feet. Can I have some, <laughs> send me some photos of your feet? And I said, look, and I was like, you know what? I know, he's done me no harm. It's like, it's, it's yeah. just a photo of my feet. And I always went, can I be honest with you? It's, it, it wasn't time, it, was, it might've been, but I said to mm. this guy, I, said, I, I, I'm, I feel too weird. <laughs> my feet, I can't, I can't do it. And he was just like, yeah, I get that a bit. That's cool. Thanks for anyway. And it was like, that was it. But it was like so weird, like talking to a dude who wanted photos because he's a foot fetishist. But he told me, and that was all right. But yeah, have you have you <laughs> have you got a, a fetish or a predilection towards anything that I don't know about? Or what can you add to the idea of people wanting photos of your feet? Um, well, this this much I can say: if they do want photos of my feet, it's easily found. You go, you can go to the Grapes of Mer um, Instagram page because I did a gig for you, Merrick, mm -hmm. at Grapes of Mirth, and I'd been to the beach beforehand and I forgot to bring my shoes with me. So I wore thongs to a gig and I never wear thongs on stage. So there's actually a photo of me wearing thongs, I think, at one of your... And it was in... Paxton's. Denver. Yeah, Paxton's. Denver. Yeah. So, you know, if he wants to check out my feet and, and do whatever he has to do, you can look at that photo. <laughs> Get that photo, blow it up to life size, and he can yeah. block mount it. You know, yeah. it, could be, it could be a photo as well. And that's the funny thing. Like, I don't, I'm not very judgy. Like, I, I don't necessarily need to go sending photos of my feet, but I don't know. Yes. But, you know. But in terms of having a thing, or, I mean, I don't, uh, 
Oh, hang on. There it oh, is. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> that. Oh, God, I'm not going to lie. I'm just got a boner looking at those feet, Tom. Um, <laughs> but see, I'd never, I'd never normally wear thongs on stage. But, yeah, I'd come from the beach. I'd gone down to Port Willie, so... Yep. Oh, mate, shoes. God's own country down there. I like how you've, you've come from the beach yeah. but you're wearing a denim shirt and denim jeans and thongs and you didn't think, you know what, maybe I'll match the whole beach attire. You've just gone, <laughs> Canadian tuxedo, but the feet say. <laughs> well, I, 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 hoped, I was hoping that if anyone took a photo, they would have only taken a mid shot. <laughs> <So> <laughs> they would have cropped it, would have cropped my feet out. I can't do, and I ne- I've never done, I can't do jeans and thongs. I don't really like thongs. Mm. I'm not a big fan of the pluggers. I got married. And yeah. I really like them, but at Port Lunga, ironically. That's why I got married. Oh, that's yeah. my friend. Oh, oh, dear. The client, it's totally 100% um, call centre. What? Just sorry, Tom. That's embarrassing. 100%. That's all right. I got to, I got to up by a call center earlier today, and they said, "Is Merrick there, please?" And I was just like, "I said, oh no, this is Peter." And they went, "Oh, okay, Peter." And I went, "No, it's uh, um, I'm gonna go." And I hung up. I just went, <laughs> could have just hung up, but I wanted to be polite and then give them a false name. Oh, uh, so I've got something for you. If ever anyone rings for a survey or you know call center and you don't want to talk to them, which is always, I've got the perfect. Uh, polite way of fobbing them off. You just say, they say their spiel and whatever, and then you just go, oh, thank you very much. I, I'm so sorry, but I just don't want to, I just don't want to be marketed to. <laughs> I just don't want to be marketed to today. Because it's, because that's what they're doing. They're mar- and it's not on their sheet. You know, <laughs> but they don't know how to respond to it. Yeah, because it's like, because then they're like, but no, 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 you're marketing to me. I don't, I, don't, I just don't want to be marketed to. And Because then they're like, what? Because that's what they're doing. They, there's no way of... Because there's a trick they kind of sit there in a booth. A mm. lot of them, they'll just have like a checklist of things. Because today it was really interesting. Oh, Georgie was there and like the guy uh, knew my name and then he was, he was I don't know where he was calling from in the world, but mm. it was like on a really sketchy line. So it could have been anywhere. I couldn't recognise the accent. But then at the end of it, he said, he said something, um, can I talk to you about something, Merrick? And then he called me mate, but it was in an accent that I'd never heard before. I <laughs> and I was like, so obviously when, you know, maybe when they're calling, because also too, you could tell it was, it was delayed coming through. So it was definitely an overseas call. And it, when it came through, it was like, he felt like he was going through a checklist, but the, the using the term, hey mate, was like on the list. So I went, oh, he's got me. He's got mm. me. Oh, mate, what am I going to do now? Okay. I actually had, I had to cancel a, um, obviously I had to cancel a flight and I was trying to get a refund that was with Webjet. Anyway, I rang up and got through and I realised that everyone you get through to now, they're all at home as well. So they're all relaxed. They don't have that, they don't have that hyped up call centre vibe where they're like, oh, you know, they're, like, they're just like at it. He just tell he was chilled out. I'm guessing he was in the Philippines. I think that's where their call center is. He just sounded relaxed. I could hear his kid in the background. I thought he's working from home. I reckon all call centers should work from home. They're just they're just chilled out, COVID. easy to deal with. Post COVID, that is exactly what's going to happen. They're all sense it's going to go. Oh my God, we never thought that you could use a telephone from your home. Go, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's how we do in the olden days. Um, question for you uh, comes from Pip. Uh, have you ever hurt someone trying to help them? Oh, yes. My son is, he's five at the moment, but when he was two, I was at, ironically, it was the children's hospital for some other reason. But anyway, and he was standing near a revolving door and he went to walk into the revolving door. And to be fair, revolving doors are designed, they wouldn't actually... Uh, you know, obviously caused major damage, but he was about to be like smack in into the revolving door. And so so my my instinct and I did it really quickly was and it was it was just pure reflex and it was the right thing to do was not to grab him, but was to push him. Because if I grabbed him he would have got caught. So I pushed him through the door so he landed clear. So I just smacked him onto the ground but he missed the door. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and he cried because, you know, I love him and that's all he'd ever known. And then out of out of nowhere one day, I just pushed him on the ground. And he's just going, it's love. What was that? Well, since the security, I thought we, I thought we had something here. <laughs> But it was just it was just a real it was just a, it was just like really quick whack like that you know it was the, the door shut and I was like oh thank God but he was crying on the floor well yeah but and you wouldn't have been able to hear his screams because of obviously they're soundproof um, oh, I left him there for half an hour oh <laughs> God, that's practically entertaining you're practically entertaining <laughs> almost shut um did, what did he say to you after you shoved him into a revolving guillotine what was yeah. He- <laughs> Yeah. yeah, he said, why'd you do that? And then I had to explain it to him. And, yeah, sometimes I have to hurt you to help you. Save your mind. <laughs> yeah. I did this thing yeah. um, uh, years ago. Times like, I don't know, more than 10 years ago. I was on a, on a trip uh, for work and I went to um, – I was overseas and I'd arrived. not going to lie, I had a few drinks on the plane, as I like to do, right? And I might have had – on this occasion, I might have had a couple too many. Anyway – we get off at the other end and the, the baggage carousel is waiting at the baggage carousel and all the, the luggage is coming out there. And I see this woman who was on a flight and she was quite short and she was elderly. She was probably in her, I'd say 70s odd, right? And um, her bag was coming around. I could see that her bag was coming and I went, well, I'm, I am actually quite chivalrous. So I went, um, can I get your bag for it? And she said, oh, no, no, it's fine. I said, no, 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 no. And I made a big deal out of it because there's lots of people around and I'm like that. Like I want people to see me doing good things, even though <laughs> I'm disingenuous. I said, no, no, I'll get this. So I ran over and she goes, no, 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 it's fine. I went, no, 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 I'll get this. I jumped up on the carousel and I grabbed her bag and I snatched it off the carousel so hard, I broke it in half and all of her stuff was <laughs> All of it, all of it just flew out like a movie onto the carousel and there was just packet after packet of tenor ladies. <laughs> just adult diaper after adult diaper after uh-huh. adult diaper and it was all stuck on the carousel and it just... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was so and it was just like uh, a the movie. I was going, oh no. And everyone's mm. looking, oh, you asshole, why would you do that? And I go, but didn't know that she had adult diapers <laughs> and I would have left it alone. And she was just like, oh, uh, absolutely. More. <laughs> then made it worse by trying to pick him up and shove him in the. Yeah, bed. yeah, I'll help you pick him up. <laughs> <laughs> just don't clean up. Anyway. <laughs> I'll put one on for solidarity. <laughs> oh, you know, I was thinking these would be handy on the plane. I don't know why you yeah. your luggage. This is more of a, a carry yeah. item for me. Um, anyway, <laughs> uh, I think we've got um, another total rando. If not, I've got another question. Have we got a, a total rando there, Jace? If we do. Sure. Yep. Yeah. I've got one. Yes. Oh, hello. It's great. Mm. Fantastic. I know this is. And she joins us now. Total rando. Hello. <laughs> it is Luke Trotter. How you going? Luke, how are you, mate? We've got a beard. Luke, of course, he's the winemaker that we're, we're drinking. He's Cabernet 2012 from Canada. Oh, thanks, Luke. Good to see you, mate. Yeah. Do you, do you and Tom both shop at the same place for walls? Yeah, green is in. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't left the vault. I've been here since left. Mate, that's I, I don't there's no chance that we can <laughs> you can show us your little sex dungeon that you've got in your house there, is there? Uh, maybe a bit. Mm-hmm. A lot of paperwork. Yeah. But it's got it's got a proper bank vault, Tom. This is a, Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Wait, here we go. Start oh, great. Uh, sorry, uh, Luke. You get there? Look at that. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. When COVID started, did you just go down there and lock the door for a little while just to try to wrap your head around it? Little air patch in the uh, in the wall over here. Pull, pull a big tube out. Yeah. <laughs> we, got this- pump, we got a pump so we can pull oxygen in if we need it. Yeah. So if you ever want the idea, Tom, is, and he was telling me this as we were drinking some wonderful Cabernet, and mm. I'd had a few, and then Luke, you started explaining to me that inside the bank vault. There's a little air tube there that's got a little compressor at the other end. 
just in yep. case anybody ever got locked in the bank vault, Tom, and they couldn't get out, they could survive and call for help. Isn't that clever? Look. Oh, yeah. Just, just a little plaque in the wall. That's a plaque. <laughs> that's uh, also to Luke's butt plug. Which, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Luke, please ask your question, mate. Uh, well, I guess just learning that you're a fellow uh, SUNY, uh, Sydney Uni graduate, Tom, um, what's the weirdest place you've uh, had, a, had a wine or a drink around Sydney Uni? Oh, um, weirdest place. I usually had it in conventional places. I used to, um, I actually wasn't a big wine drinker back then because I was in a band and I used to drink beer and I taught myself to like beer because I used to get given it for free. I remember that. But I also, something I used to do at Manning Bar as I'm going to call this a trick. It's not really a trick. I used to more than happily just drink the dregs of all the leftover beers <laughs> for my friend's amusement. Because <laughs> I'd go, I'm, oh, I can't be bothered buying another beer. I'm just going to drink all those beers that haven't been finished. And they'd be like, you can't do that. And I'd be like, oh, check this out. <laughs> oh. And then every now and again, you wake up and there's a sore on your lip and you go, I do not know. <laughs> How I keep getting these things. Oh, it was an amazing variety of beers too. VB, new, VB, new, new, <laughs> VB, new, VB, new. That was gold. it. <laughs> gold. I think it might have even been pre-gold or there was no gold around there then. Uh, uh, too old, the old dark beer. Oh, old. Yeah. Old, that's right. Do you remember, what's the beer called? There was a, in Sydney, you used to be able to get like half old, half new. There was a name for it, 50-50. It was 50-50. Yeah, 50-50. And in Melbourne, I used to hear them called uh, Black and Tans. I used to uh, like yes. Black and Tan. Awesome drink. Or oh, Reshes was the other one we used to have. Yeah, I like Reshes. Silver Bullet. Mm. Um, Luke, is, there's not a brewer in Coonawarra, is there? There's no one brewing beer there? Not not in Coonawarra, down Clay We've got some, some guys down there making some beer down that way. So we do have a local dish one there. And mate, you're all rugged up and woolly. What's the weather like in Coonawarra at the moment? Uh, pretty cold. We got down to minus one the other night, so yeah, we've got all the fireplaces running. Jesus. No wonder you, you're starting to grow a beard like you're about to go off and hunt some whales. <laughs> I, I, at the start of COVID, I thought we're not, not doing anything until September, so I thought I'd just grow and yeah, here we are. Yeah, and 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 I think it. I think it's really uh, timely. We should mention that South Australia is going to open their borders. Oh, well, yeah. Oh, yeah. So celebrate. Bring some bloody fruit in. Why not? Fuck yeah. it. <laughs> well, it's good for us because it's only 15 k's away, Victoria, so we need them. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's yeah, it. No. Over the border and visit Kunawara. Kunawara did have a, a little, you had a little COVID incident there, didn't you? Didn't you have somebody come through and drop off a little bit of COVID and then uh, it was all cleaned up very quickly? And when I say cleaned up, did yeah, you? Just, just, one, just one person. And thanks to those bloody Swiss people that came from Brussels. So. Oh, <laughs> Classic. You know, the problem is with the Swiss, there's always a hole in their plan. Get it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they didn't want to fight the war, so they fled. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, now we're just getting into weird territory there. <laughs> Tapping onto the Swiss there. Well, Luke, mate, thank you very much. The, the no wine problem. is excellent. As I said, like, I love this wine. I think it's great. Yeah. I am, unfortunately, uh, Tom's already had Mongolian beef. So the. Yeah. Uh, Should have had the Riesling. Too much talk about Chardonnay, not enough about Riesling. Riesling is great. Oh, okay. Yes. No, that's true. Oh, I've got a. I reckon I've got a great ad pick for Riesling. Right. It's like this is this is right up there with throw another shrimp on the barbie. You don't need a riso for a riso. <laughs> How good would that be on a poster? And then people start calling. People start, yeah, people start calling Riesling riso. I mean, that's sort of strange too. You don't need a riso for a riso. I mean, that is. I mean, picture it on a billboard. I mean, oh, just, beautiful. I mean, you're, you, it just say, for example, right, you were not, uh, you know, confined by ABC constraints. You could say, you don't need a Rezo for a Rezo Gleeso. Mm. Look at that. Gleeso says no need for a Rezo for a Rezo. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just beautiful. It's <laughs> big money. It's money. No, I've got to ring up Gruen, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, Luke, all the best to you and to Beck. Right. And Thank you. Love, love the series. They've been awesome. Uh, thanks yeah. very much, mate. Look forward to seeing you in the Coonawarra again when uh, when Grapes and Mirth gets back there. Yes. Uh, thanks mate, for I might be able to bring Gleeso to the, uh, to the Coonawarra if things match mm. up. Get him there. We take a little plane to the Coonawarra, uh, Gleeso. It's great. It's a tiny little aircraft. 
Uh, so yep. you've been on one of them before. We just fly yep. in and uh, have a great time. Bang, out of there before you get locked up in Luke's sex dungeon. Slash. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mate, it's been an absolute pleasure. I'll let you go because I know that you've obviously got some Chinese food that you probably want to get. Yes, As we I've got to rip back into it. You're never quite done with it. It sits in the container. You go back there a little bit later, you chuck it in the microwave, bang, it's back to life. I'll be drilling into it probably still at midnight tonight. That's the truth. Tom Gleason, it has been an absolute pleasure. A huge thanks again to, to Luke and the Block for the wine. A huge thanks to Plum. These are, these are a Melbourne uh, company, Plum. And they make incredible glassware. If you want some nice, fancy glasses, as I call them, some STEM glasses, Plum with two M's, they're great people and they make great glassware and they've provided the glassware for all of our guests over the entire course of the series. Uh, yeah. Lisa, just great to see you, mate. No worries. And also, while we're plugging things, I've got a board game. We just go, I know. Oh, <laughs> well, it was sitting, it got delivered the other day. I was sitting over there. I thought I should grab it because it would just be funny to show. It's great. But again, it was like Homer in The Simpsons where he just comes yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, thanks, Derek. I really appreciate it. And thanks for the wine, too. Hey, always great to speak to you. Until the next time, cheers. And thanks I'll see to you in person everybody. soon. Thanks to everybody who's tuned in and been a part of Invino Veritas. Uh, Grapes and Mirth will hopefully be back with events sooner rather than later. And uh, we will look forward to doing a, another series of Invino Veritas with your favourite comedians from right around the country. Gleeso, to everybody else, have a great Friday. Have a great weekend. Thank you to everybody for being a part of it, your bad seeds. See you next time. Cheers.